Welcome to Retro Crisis. This video is intended for people that are new to RetroArch. By the end of this video, you'll have an introductory understanding of what RetroArch is and how to perform basic functions such as installing cores, importing ROM files, and most importantly, playing the games you have imported. So the first step is we want to download RetroArch. So firstly, we want to go to RetroArch.com. And once you're at the website, you'll see this banner here and you can just click on Get RetroArch. And hopefully the website will just detect which operating system you're running and you'll be able to just download the stable version of RetroArch immediately. Alternatively, you can just uh, scroll down and find whichever platform you're using and download the version of RetroArch. But for this uh, demo, I'm just gonna go to Download Stable. Okay, so now I've downloaded RetroArch as the executable file. It may be named a little bit differently depending on which version of an operating system you're using. And I've got a folder here with some NES ROMs. And now I just want to create a new folder for where I'm going to install RetroArch. So I'm just going to call it RetroArch, just for simplicity's sake. And then I'm going to start installing RetroArch. And click Next and have a read of the licensing agreement press I agree. And then you just want to browse to whichever location you want to install it to. What I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to browse to this folder here. And once you've selected the location, just press next. You want to make sure you've installed DirectX 9C runtime. Uh, there's a good chance your machine may already have it installed. You need to make sure you've clicked it just in case. And then press next. And then finally press install. And then you may have the uh, DirectX installation pop up. Just press accept and next. And untick install Bing bar. And then press next again. And then just press finish to finalize this. And that's it. That should be RetroWatch installed. And now if I just open up the RetroWatch folder, yep, there's a whole bunch of stuff there. Great. Now I'll just go back and I'm happy to delete the uh, setup file. Don't need that anymore. Right, so now you've installed it, you just go to RetroWatch and you want to navigate down to retroarch.exe. So now we've got Retroarch installed, we just want to double click it. Now you can use Retroarch with a keyboard or you can even use a, a control pad. I find that the Xbox controllers work very well out of the box with no real configuration needed. So you can use a wired Xbox controller or a Bluetooth Xbox controller. I'm sure other controllers work too, but you know, you'll have to experiment and try them for yourselves. For this video, I'll just be using a keyboard to navigate around the system. But if you do want to configure your controller, I'll show you where you can go first. So you want to Go to settings and then go down to input. And then once you're in the input menu, go all the way down to port one controls. And then if you want to kind of bind the keys of your controller, all you have to do is go to set all controls. I'll just press enter on that. And then you'll see on screen prompts where you can start choosing buttons. So just press the corresponding button on your controller and that should map it within RetroArch. If you make a mistake and you want to start again, you can simply go to reset to default controls and you can just start the process again as many times as you need. Now we can just return back to the main menu. So traditionally when you want to play a ROM file you need to download an emulator. In RetroArch to play a ROM file you need to download a core. So in order to download a core you want to go to online updater and you want to go to core downloader. And now it's just a matter of just scrolling through this list and finding the core you want to download. So because I've got some NES games I want to use in this demo, I'm going to scroll down to Nintendo and then NES slash Famicom. And in brackets you can see it says Messen. Whatever name you see in the brackets is the actual name of the core or emulator. Once you found a, a core you want to install, you just go to it and just press enter or confirm on your control pad. In order to confirm whether a core's been installed or not, you'll see a little green hash sign appear uh, to the right of the name of the core. And now we can just back out to the main menu and that's the core installed, simple as that. Now there are a couple of different ways you can load games within RetroArch. So one of the methods is you can just find a game in your directory structure and you can just drag it straight into RetroArch and then RetroArch will do all the uh, complicated stuff in the background and just load the game for you. The alternative to drag and drop is going to load content and going to C drive and then simply just navigating to whichever folder you've stored your ROM files in and then you'll be able to play the ROM file via this method. So if I go back to NES ROMs and then go down to Hellfighter, wherever it was.
there we go. Now there is a third method and this is to import the contents of an entire folder into a playlist. So where we want to go is down to import content and scan directory. And then it's just a matter of navigating to whichever folder you've got your ROM stored in. So for example, I'd go to NES ROMs. So once you're in the folder which has your ROMs, you want to click on the scan this directory option. And then it just takes a little while to scan the directory. And then you just back out to the main home screen in RetroArch and we just scroll down it. And as you can see, there's a NES controller that's popped up and all the games have been imported. Now this importing process will only work if you've got the relevant core installed. So for example, if you import a number of Sega Mega Drive games, but you don't have a Sega Mega Drive core installed, the importing process won't work. Something else that's important is everything in this playlist is just a shortcut to the ROM files on your system. So if you delete a ROM file from your folder or even rename the ROM file, the playlist entry will no longer work and you'll have to um, delete the entry from the playlist and re-import the game. I'm gonna show you very quickly how you can uh, delete entire playlists just in case you've made a mistake or you just wanna delete it. So we go to the main menu, we go to settings, we scroll all the way down to playlists and then you can just go to manage playlists. So here's the uh, Nintendo Entertainment playlist I made. So I'm just gonna go into there and then I can just go to delete playlist. And also if you click on clean playlist, it'll then remove any uh, shortcuts in the playlist that you know are no longer valid. So if I just go to delete playlist and then just back out to the main menu, you'll notice that the NES playlist has gone. Now let's say you're in a game and you want to tweak some of the options of the emulator. It's as simple as hitting F1 on your keyboard. So from here you're able to restart the game and you're able to close the game entirely. Or you can simply just click back on resume to resume the game. In order to go to the options that are specific to a core, you want to go all the way down until you get to options. And once you're in options, you'll see core specific options. I'll let you experiment for yourself. Uh, some cores do have some really cool options. And the final thing you should know is how do you exit RetroArch? So there's a few different ways of doing it. The easiest way is to simply press escape twice and that'll just close RetroArch entirely. Or you can go to file and quit RetroArch or you can click the little cross at the top. Or you can, if you just back out to the main menu, you can just go down to quit RetroArch. And that should be enough to get you off the ground in RetroArch. I hope this video tutorial was useful if you have any tips you'd like to share, just drop them in the comments section below. This has been Retro Crisis. Thank you for watching.